red dirt road The stars are bright and the moon is low A revenue man coming up behind Billy thinks he's gonna catch me with this load of moonshine But I cut the lights and mash the gas Turn a curve into a straight line All right, Bill, what are you thinking? Well, I know that they had that second gear coming off the north turn onto the asphalt highway, which was a two-lane road, real narrow. People stand on both sides of it. And probably run along in here, they'd be looking in the mirror to make sure everything's clear behind them and what's going on in front of them before they might want to pass the car. And then they'd be shifting in the high gear. down to blacktop you go with a little nose you know and you'd be watching all the time what's going on around you well back in the 50s when we come down here actually first race about 35 36 this was a straight little two-lane road not anything down here but a lighthouse and maybe a home or two but to begin with I don't remember any and that was 1951. Now they, you know, with the construction and homes being built, and motels and cottages, they've added some curves to it. You know, they got to rearrange everything today. And they can take a nice piece of land and bring in dirt. But now this has got little curves in it. As you get on down here, it begins to be straight again like it was. A little narrow road, two lanes and palmettos on both sides of it and uh, during the race you would see occasionally spectators on both sides of the road generally they were closer to the turn for the action set and uh, you could stand on the edge of this road there was no such thing as a crowd control and I know my first venture down here I stood on the edge of the road down here toward the south turn waiting for them to, to come down the road and turn into the south turn and they come over no Jimmy Lou Allen and Jack Smith and before I could stand back they come by me and blow me off my feet and I landed about two foot behind me on my butt and uh, like I say no crowd control so I wonder if people didn't get hurt when I'm coming down to blacktop you'll be running the fastest to get down to the lower end Back in those days, you'd be running about 120 mile an hour in these cars. And uh, you, the turn itself, you, when you come over and over, there it was. And so the more years you'd run down here, to, you begin to be able to hit your mark, so to speak. The northern crowd that come down here, they there was no practice. They filled this gully up down here in the turn full of cars. They, stay on the ground too long and then when they topped the knoll there it was they couldn't stop and uh, you could downshift but you had to really double clutch it to be good because if you didn't you'd, you'd break an axle or a tranny and uh, the uh, you, you had to slow it down and after about five six laps your brakes began to fade because back in those days they just had a little narrow brake lining and the friction material was unheard of as far as high performance. So going up the beach side over here, you come off the beach and you drifted out towards the edge of the water and it was a little moist in there, a little bit wet, and the sand was packed and the moisture from that sand would cool your brakes and it would help you. And two mile down, two mile back up the beach, you wouldn't use the brakes, so it helped. But had to dissipate the heat and that's why they ran out close to the edge of the, of the ocean of the sand and, and the water and of course doing that you covered your windshield you couldn't see real good 
the wipers would work at low speed, but once you got up to high speed, the wipers would, from the pressure from the air and, and, and wind hitting that windshield and over the car, it lift the blades right off the windshield, and they would stand out and flop in the air, so they quit using the windshield wipers. And some of them would take a, a broom handle, cut it about that long, and put a towel on the end of it, and tape it, and, and wet it for the race. And then when it started, they could take out the shoot the hand out the window here and wipe the windshield off and uh, put it in high gear and of course it had to you know, bring the arm back in. You did whatever you could do to try to help you see if it was using a broom handle or a wiper blade. Uh, some of them put clear plastic with a, a tie strap on it and after it would get uh, from debris and the sand and all couldn't see through it more, you just came around and jerked it off. And there was another one. So you could do that a couple, three times. I wonder what my daddy thought when he came down here for the first time ran on the beach. You know, he came from 47 to about 56. And he always looked forward to coming down here. I think it's a lot of fun. They enjoy seeing one another all the racers. But going up the beach with about 50, 60 cars, can you believe that? Can you imagine what that would be like? The year he won it, he started six. And he would pass a car in front of him about every other lap until he was running second. And then uh, he was behind Fonny. Fonny was showboat shifting, you know, setting the second gear and spinning the wheels, and my daddy knew he was going to run out of gas. So he just bided his time, sure enough, Fonny run out of gas. My daddy would short shift it. That means getting it in high gear real quick to save gas. sideways and if you were along here you could watch them going up the beach at over 100 mile an hour and the cars would not be going straight they'd be at an angle because of the wind the cars are so light at speed and then the wind blowing sideways and you see them going angle to straight up the beach but the wheel be turned maybe to the right to keep it going straight and at some point in time you knew you had to let up when you approached the north turn and you could gauge that north turn by the way the spectators, they began to disappear and bear around to your left so you knew that you was going to have to turn left. And it had some uh, law enforcement out on the beach facing you as you approached and uh, that was to give you an indication that you need to turn. And as the track got rougher and rougher, you began to turn in later and later to dodge the, the ruts in the sand and it would break axles and spindles and if you hit one this right it might flip you over so you had to be aware during that race the whole race of how the track conditions were and you you know if you trying to go over the ruts as they beat out they get foot deep they can tear your car up disable it turn you over and you know like then and now you had to finish the race to win it off the tire, didn't they? angling into the corner and then get the car to turn a little bit sideways to help slow you down and 
if you were some actually some of the guys I guess what I'm trying to say is to help slow it down they would turn them sideways and approach to turn and the car will be drifting sideways to slow it down and then they hit the clutch and downshift it in the second gear and uh, hit the throttle and get the car back under power and the wheels pulling the car's sort of straighten out and uh, you go through the corner and then you turn it some more to come off the corner then you had to be light on the throttle so the car wouldn't turn sideways with you again. In other words, you put too much throttle in it, the rear would break loose and the car wants to spin around out from under you. It's just a, yeah. a, deli a delicate awesome. deal, you know. I guess after you've done it for several years, you begin to get the knack of how to go through the corner. Yeah. But it was an art. You make up a lot of time. But you had boys to couldn't do it today. No, there ain't many of them can do it. I mean, I wouldn't even attempt it. I mean, you know, the cars back then were top heavy. I, I, those guys were real well, men. Yeah. But when you're driving with the devil, boys, there ain't no second place. Burning rubber to burning mash I'll freedom over prison But I like the cash And even though I know I'm bound for an early grave Jesus doesn't dwell in Dawsonville He's got better souls to save So I cut the lights and mash the gas Turn a curve into a straight line you're gonna play this game with me, you got to know how to drive. You lose on Sunday, you just lose a race. But when you're driving with the devil boys, there ain't no second place. Second place.